personally on if I'm coming to a turn and it's like, let's say let's take this one for example left hand turn my outside foot I put the the peg in the groove of my boot because what that allows me to do is once I've got through the apex of the turn and I want to start put, uh, picking my bike up it's easier for me with my foot locked in the groove to give it a little bit of a push as I'm accelerating to help stand the bike up. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of, they always tell you, yes, you do want to ride on the ball of your feet, but it's the inside foot on the ball of your feet that's pushing you into the turn. But once you hit apex and you're starting to try to get the bike stood up, if you're locked in on that, you can kind of give it a little bit more of a push with your foot locked in. And it also helps you when you're braking. I always uh, lock the groove of my boot into the peg so that under heavy braking, I can actually push against it with my leg. And that helps me. It doesn't, because when you start braking and you're at speed on, especially on a big bike, the tendency is for you to be pushed forward over the tank. And a lot of times, the only way you can prevent that is to lock your boot in that groove and kind of push against the peg as you're braking. And what that does is it allows you to control the bike more. And the way that we're going to go fast is to have control of the bike. And everybody's going to tell you, um, if you don't have control, then you're not going to go fast because you're fighting the bike the whole time. So it's just a little technique that I use. I don't know if uh, you use that technique, but uh, you know it does help. Uh, it's something that we can definitely work on today. Um, but actually, we're just talking about uh, going into the gut check. We're talking about uh, catching a short shift here. Um, well, I usually catch my short shift. I usually come out of here. I either catch it here or here. It just depends on where traffic is. Uh, but the reason we're catching a short shift is to allow us to use the gearing to pull us all the way through, all the way down into the long shift. Okay. And you can do this one. Yeah. Okay. So your turn inch should start as you press the hill, right on the hill, right? And if you guys have not already started to line up and start looking, because you have to be thinking ahead here, because you know by right the other side of that hill you need to start turning in. If you haven't already started doing that, then you're out of shape already. Uh, for the most part, right, we're on this scene as we're pressing the hill and we start our turn and how we're coming over the top of the hill. And what does that do to the bike? Well, you're on a hill, you're at a little bit of lean angle, and you're applying brake, right? So we don't want to, as we're braking, we don't want to put too much lean angle with the braking because that's going to what? It's going to tend to tuck the front tire, right? Because you're also coming up over a hill. So you're a little sideways, the bike's a little sideways, it's at lean angle, and you're coming downhill, okay? So that's a recipe for disaster if you're adding too much brake pressure as you're coming up the brake. So be real careful about trail braking over, over the top of that. Um, I personally, um, and I don't know if Brad does this, but I'll actually apply some brake to scrub some speed, and then right as I get to the hill, I'll actually let off my brakes and let the bike roll up over the hill, and then I'll start my turn and off my brakes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you want to do uh, most of your braking before you get on the backside of the hill. Because you're to, as you're going up, as soon as you get to the peak, the bike on loads. Okay. And then it loads again, and you're coming down the hill, so you've got to load the front, you know, and then of course the decline. Putting all that pressure on your tire. So, so a lot of times, um, yeah, I'll do all my braking before then. I get to the top of the hill, and if I'm just too wide, man, I'm just too wide. You know, I just kind of use the throttle a little bit to tighten it up. Uh, and then after, oh, we'll go ahead. Oh, we'll down here. Yes, yes, yes. Downshift oh, yeah. before. Yeah. I downshift uh, before um, before the launch for the whole section. A lot of people downshift maybe once before the launch. Then when they get over the launch, maybe they downshift again before they click right. it back. I like to just Take do it two. all before the launch. And, you know, that rear end get a little bit squirrely, but then I'm done. I want to shift again into the swoop. What are you going to do better? You got to have a little bit of RPM and a little bit of speed to get the bike to respond to what you're giving it on the throttle, right? It's all maintenance throttle, though. There's no time to be made up, so you have to maintain the throttle. On, off, on, off a little bit, just real easy motions of the throttle all the way through there and all the way around there. Uh, it, it, it's bad because if you get stuck behind somebody that you're trying to pass and you can't get past them before you get in there, then you've got to follow them pretty much all the way through there. But the cool thing about that is, 
there is a, uh, on the exit of this turn, there's a, a bump on the exit of it. So we're coming here, we're on the asphalt, right? We're staying on the asphalt, staying on the asphalt, staying on the asphalt. We get all the way, and at the end of this curving right here, there's a bump. And that bump is your indication as you're turning for the next turn. The bad thing is, is um, if you go across that bump at lean angle, it basically compresses your suspension and drives you out off the edge of the track. As you're coming out of the keyhole, and you know that bump is coming, pick your bike up, go straight up and down over the bump, and once you hit the bump, that's your key to turn it in. And I see like, uh, you know, I was watching Ty through there one time, and he just basically, as soon as he picks the bike up, he gets on the gas and kind of wheelies over that bump, and then just sets it down and then turns it in. Yeah. Yeah. You were doing that? How some of these guys were teaching me is that, you know, either on the gas or on the brakes. Um, so all those little short sections between those, you know, it's like, you're braking, you come over the locks and it's what? And brake, turn, what? Brake, turn, it goes not. Just because you know that your turn's coming up doesn't mean that you coast to that corner. You get on the gas and you're on the brakes. You get on the gas and you're on the brakes. That's right. Yeah. Anytime that you're actually rolling off the ball and letting the bike coast, you're losing speed. So it should always be a throttle to brake. Throttle to brake. Everywhere. That's how you maintain the speed and the lap time is by going to throttle to brake. You guys are seeing a turn, you turn your nose coming out, you're rolling off the throttle and letting the bike coast into it. You're immediately in one, losing time, and two, opening up the door for somebody else to get past you. Because when you're rolling off the throttle and somebody else is staying on the throttle for the come of the brake, you're definitely going to be able to get it up underneath you, and you're going to be able to get past you. So we were talking about what happens if you're trying to pass somebody and you can't get past them and you've got to follow them through the keyhole. What's next? Where are you going to pass them at? Straight. That's right, this next little straight. And what's going to happen is most people. Hold on a second. And just one more thing before we get off this. It's kind of it's good also. Is that, you know, see how we're holding it? Actually, we can hold it a little hold it farther. Yeah. I would hold you it farther hold than it. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you want to hold it. The, the, the line's not right. right. You want to hold it all the way out. So if, if you're holding this a little longer and you square it up, what happens to the guy that's on the concrete? Where's he going to end up? He's going to end up uh, over here where this line is, actually. What about the guy on the outside of the concrete? He's going to end up. Over here on the curve, so those guys are going to have to slow down so much and uh, make such a sharp corner that you know you come out here, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then when you just get your bike turned real get quick and get on the gas, and it's going to push you to the outside in the next that's right. slide. That, that's a good thing too. So remember, stay off the concrete. Bump at the exit is your turn-in point. Okay. <clears throat> so as soon as you feel that bump, you if you're not if you're not holding this to where you feel that bump, then you're not holding it long enough. Right. So is everybody feeling the bump? Everybody feels the right. Yeah. Yeah. James, uh, right. 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 All right, that's good. See where he's at on this curving, guys? This is where we want you guys to be in turn six. We want you to be right there, your knee right over the curb. You're going to take this, you're going to open the front of the back of and glide it all the way down to the top. That's a, that's a good example also of how you went to the inside. Kind of, I think you may have caught some of the bumps, but you went to the inside and I went to the outside, but we both of them in the end. That's good. Open the funnel back up, drive down in here, get your downshifts. Let's check his entry. Good. See how he's entering off the curbing but underneath the patchwork, guys? That's where we want y'all to be. Yeah, he didn't, yeah, he didn't hold it in, That's no, right. the, next, in the next two turns. That's right. So right there, off the end of the keyhole, you kind of want to wait a little bit more almost to the end of the curbing before you start your turn in, okay? Um, and then once you start your turn in, You didn't let the bike drift out and you come back here, but this turn in, way, way too early. Way too early. Yeah, exactly. So hold it. Jerk it around. Jerk it around. But the reason you're having to do that is to turn it into early. So right there, you can let the bike drift all the way out to the edge of the track, which helps you set up a little better for the rest of the gut check here. Right. See, when you, if you carry, if you carry more speed through there, your bike will naturally kind of run out to the outside there. All, all that, all that indicates that you can carry more speed today. you got all that track out there to use your side. Tons of track out there, use it. It's real estate. And that real estate is yours because you paid for it today. Yeah. That's right, so use it. All right? You let the bike drift out a little more, get yourself set up again. And right here, nail it. Where are you going? Where are you going? Stay over here. 